All right, so we're back uh, the following day. Yesterday we painted the headstock white. Um, today, what we've done on the body is we've uh, sanded it all to 220, all the way around. Um, and now we're gonna get the white on, get the white coat on. And incidentally, we weighed the body out. It's at four pounds, six ounces. So it's not basswood light, but it's not too heavy. It's actually a weight that I think is gonna be pretty cool. Um, should give some nice sustain, some snap. Um, sometimes the basswood guitars are a little bit, let's say a little bit mellow. Um, this one should have some good sustain to it and some good kind of a ringing sound to it, some good uh, snap. So anyway, we're gonna go through um, uh, painting it white and the first thing I like to do is I've got one of these guys, which is the painting stick, which uh, I recommend. A lot of people you'll see on the net or whatever in homebrew jobs, um, We'll shove a coat hanger through there. When I was a teenager, I used to do that too. And I actually painted a few guitars in my parents' shower. I'm sure they loved that. Uh, but I actually did that. Um, it's crazy. So anyway, um, what this is is just a wood dowel that's cut down. Um, I used the bandsaw to cut myself a little bit of a relief area. Um, so that, number one, uh, you've got a flat surface for this round bar to register in the neck pocket um, and also for the thickness so that a wood screw um, can actually make it through. Obviously if it was the full one inch the screw wouldn't be going through and it would be rolling around. So I also give a little bit of a notch in there too so that um, if you can sort of see how it would work out um, it kind of gives the ability to paint into the pocket a little bit as well. So that helps with chipping. Um, chips tend to form at edges. So if you were to end your paint in a hard way, right here, if you were to use like, let's say a stick that was just drilled straight down on there and flat, you would end up with an area that's very difficult to paint on the heel of the neck in this area. So for instance, um, if this was like a flat stick that we were gonna attach to the guitar for painting, and we were to put it on there, you could see this little area here is going to be very difficult to get for paint to get into and adhere to, and that'll be a good place for paint to start chipping off. Not that on a relic guitar that's going to be a problem. That might actually be an advantage in some cases, but I prefer to get the paint around the edges of the pocket as well. So that sort of helps me do it. So um, we're going to attach that. We've got these. Um, these are actually from a Craig, uh, from a company called Craig, and they're square drive wood screws so um, we start them off a little bit so we get a couple of points just sticking through um, then what we're going to do is we're going to place it in the pocket in an area that we like so right about there and then we're going to give it a couple of taps All right that's going to be where we're going to have our screws now you could probably if you get away with just driving those screws in without pre-drilling, but I guess it would really suck if you spent all these hours making the guitar and uh, you ended up sort of splitting the neck pocket. That would suck. So you, I recommend pre-drilling. And then for a drill stop, depth stop, I always use a piece of tape. So I'm just going to drill in, I don't know, say a half inch, about that far. So I'm going to start with the first, kind of bring it back. Move this. Um, now I'm going to start this screw, but sometimes they're not going to be in exactly the same place. So we're going to drive this one home and load our square bit into the drill here. Get this all lined up so that it's in that hole we just piloted out. Okay. Okay, that's there. And then we're going to Try to get this somewhat straight again. We're going to, uh, there we go, clear that out, have a little bit of funk in there. Now we're going to use our uh, drill bit again and pre drill just a little bit here. Okay, take out our bit, grab ourselves our wood screw again, chuck it in. they're both pretty tight and they are okay so then we have a 
pretty cool handle here that we can use for kind of twirling the guitar around to get a good paint on it. And on the other side of it, got a little hook here so we can hang it uh, to dry. So this thing is ready to go into the paint room. Um, again, we're going to be using the same paints that we had used on the headstock or that we're going to use on the headstock so it all matches. I'll go through that again if you hadn't seen that um, segment, the last segment. Um, we're using uh, for the white an acrylic lacquer, a Rust-Oleum Gloss Premium Automotive Formulation, and this is a real lacquer that you can recoat anytime. It's an acetone acetate based lacquer. Um, for the red orange, I I'm going for the uh, live without a net sort of look, and I guess the stage lights also had an effect on how that guitar appeared on the video. And you know they 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 light them. Um, probably had a lot of yellow gels or orange gels. It seems like that stage was lit a little bit towards the uh, the yellow kind of hueish look. So I'm going to make it look a little bit towards the orange, and we're going to use this Montana Gold acrylic, which is also a um, an acrylic lacquer that you can recoat every any time, and is compatible with this lacquer. It's an acetone acetate based uh, uh, paint and I've used it before in conjunction with the Rust-Oleum and it works out pretty good and this is the red orange is the uh, color of the paint and for the black we're using uh, actual you know real sort of nitro lacquer from Balin and this is their gloss black and I've already said I think about this it's the darkest the blackest black I think of any paint any spray paint out there it really does um, look like you know carbon black so that's it so i'm going to go and uh, shoot some coats of paint on here i think we're going to go for uh probably four coats the first coat we're going to sort of give a mist on and we're going to let it dry we're probably going to allow for a half an hour between coats um and then we should have our uh our guitar painted white so i'll see you guys in a little bit Okay, uh, it's taken us a little over an hour, but um, we've got the body painted white. Nice um, coat. Um, no real overspray on it. Um, laid out pretty good for being rattle can paint, but you don't want it in this case to lay out really ultra smooth. Um, that wouldn't look right. And some of the um, orange peel is sort of necessary to get the look of the guitar um, as it wears in as the orange coat tends to sink into the orange peel and the white coat and when it's sort of rubbed back um, that red orange tends to stay in those little um, let's say depression sulci or something like that of uh, the orange peel so it gives it that kind of uh, look that the, the original guitar had where the, it's kind of stippled looking. So you want a good balance between orange, between professionalism and amateurism. Um, I think Unkert painted these guitars and he obviously knew how to paint a guitar. Um, if he was given the right equipment and the time, he could have made it as good as he wanted to, but he was, I guess, instructed to use rattle can paint and to make the guitar, you know, in a day maybe, who knows. So, you know, you're going to end up with orange peel when you do that. I've also got um, a little, this is probably a bug hole that extends through the body, but you know what? That doesn't matter on this guitar because you can't tell. The guitar has so many holes in it anyway. One more ain't going to make a difference. But if this were, um, let's say, like a, 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 you know, a pristine sort of, um, you know, production factory kind of look build, uh, that would have been filled. And you would fill that with like CA glue, maybe, you know, a wood filler. I'd probably have used CA. Um, that way, if the bug's still in there, he's screwed. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to let this dry for a day or two. And uh, the neck's been drying now for 24 hours. So maybe tomorrow we can tape it off and spray the orange red coat on it. But we'll see how that all goes. So for now, that's about it for today, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.